Hey guys, this is the Wolf from Tennis House. I have Janko Tipsarovic forehand today. Why did I pick it? I will tell you because he could create unbelievable power on his ground strokes and it just uh, looked beautiful how he found the way to engage his whole body to hit those forehands. So I will tell you and give you three amazing points of his shot that will enable you to create more power on your forehand. So if you're one of the players who's struggling to create power, this video is a must for you because you can copy what he's doing and you will hit faster forehands guaranteed after the, you watch that video. And if you like what we do, take a moment to subscribe, turn the notifications button on, and share the video if you think we did a good job with that. So, let's get straight to it. So the first thing Yanko does unbelievably well is when the ball comes, he has a beautiful unit turn. He doesn't keep the left hand as long as other players maybe on the record, but you can see still here that he coils very, very well. So his belly button points to the crowd, I call it. His racket is on the right side and his non-dominant arm is on the right side. So everything is on the right side, ready to go the most efficient way possible to go and strike the ball so he will strike the ball somewhere around where the arrow is and why do we need to keep the racket and everything else on the right hand side and some call it the atp forehand um, whatever it is you need to keep it there because if you turn too far around and your opponent can see um, your racket from the strings from the other side you just going to have too much of an angular momentum. With the way Yanko hits the ball, he has angular and linear momentum. So he has best of both worlds. If you go too far around in this moment here, you're going to be only having angular momentum. So that's why it's so important to have this ATP forehand to keep everything compact and uh, dedicated towards the target, which is the ball. So that's one great thing Yanko has going for him on his forehand. So the next thing, if you look at Yanko's forehand is, the moment he loading the legs the most, which is right here, he is in about 114 to 10 uh, degrees angle. And this is important because when you load the legs too much, then you lose the stored energy. If you don't load the legs at all, you don't have stored energy. So you have to find a happy medium of loading and unloading. And I always compare it to a basketball player. If you load too much, you can't dunk, you can't get up anymore. So it's a, it's a loading, a getting in, and then a quick release. And as quicker you release, as more energy and power you're going to get into that ball. So he's loading here perfectly. And if you see in this moment when he loads the most... We are here on his head height, and when he's done with the shot, look how much higher he's up there. So that's significantly much, and he's just doing a tremendous job from this loading position, exploding out, and getting his racket to the target, to the ball. So that was the second point. Before I get to the third point, I want you to pay attention to Janko's and which is one of the most important things of Yanko's hands and racket. So as of now, the butt cap here is going towards the ball and look now at his fingers. This is so amazing. Two of his fingers, this pinky finger and the ring finger, they're off the racket. And if you play for a little while and you did some drills, you might have had a coach who's telling you to take the pinky and ring finger off to feel the fluency of your shot and to not squeeze the racket too tight. So what Yanko is doing, he creates so much power because he's using his racket like a catapult, like a whip, and he's just exploding and letting the racket work for him. And that only works if you lose. So as he loses his get, and he just crushes the ball. Another thing that's important to create power and pace. If you look at at Yanko's pathway of the racket, it's like something like this. It's a short it's a short C. So you see it goes from here and goes out here. Some players like Roger, and I want to put it in a different color 
Some players like Roger, when they turn, they're going to be till here. And then the racket goes down and then it goes up. So Roger is creating more rounds per minute and more topspin. If you want to hit the ball faster, you have to have a little flatter C, like Yanko. And I hope you can see that. It's like a C here. And if you want to have more like a, like Roger is using a, something like this. So Roger has like a little bigger C. So if you have this flatter C, you can create more power because you go just more linear throughout the shot. And as I said earlier, the two fingers off, I've never seen that before, but it shows you how loose he is, and he lets the racket work for him. And pay attention, it's always the same chronologically order. The grip now, this is fun too, the grip now points towards the ball. The grip is still in front right here in this moment of the shot. And then the racket head snaps and catches like a whip. And the racket head is almost at the same level like the ball, a little bit in front. And afterwards, the racket head is uh, following through. So it always goes from butt cap, the bottom of the racket, to almost the same level of wrist and racket head. And then the racket head takes over. And if you can see, he hits the ball here, follows through, and then he finishes his shot. And... As, as I said, it's unbelievable how loose he is and how much he uses the racket to work for him to create this massive power. And it all, the point, first point was the rotation and the coil, the legs, and then be, the being loose. Those three things are so important if you want to hit the ball faster. And one more fascinating thing is here the belly button points to the crowd and when he's done with the shot, he turned completely around and the belly button points to the other side. So Yanko was one of the players who managed to use his body in a very efficient way, in a very powerful way, and at the same time being loose and relaxed to create so much power on a shot. So if you keep those things in mind, you will definitely have a faster forehand. So I hope that video helped you guys. And as always, if you like what we do, take a moment to subscribe. Bianco, um, thank you for letting me use the video. Uh, you, you're one of the most amazing players out there. I love to watch you. Always fun. And guys, I hope you study his forehand if you want to create more power because that was one of the most powerful forehands. And he managed to use everything correctly. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And... Have a beautiful, wonderful rest of the day.